In T minus three, two, one, we begin the fun. Touring our way through the NBA from that big, big apple to the place by the bay. Is your mind buckled in? Cause it's time to begin. Seiko and his friends are doing it again. The Hang Time Podcast is the spot, so sit back, relax, cause the show's about to drop. Welcome into a, another edition of the Hang Time Podcast. I'm your host, Seiko Smith. Here in Atlanta, sheltered in place, staying at the house with the fam uh, as we all live through the global pandemic that is the coronavirus. Uh, but that hasn't stopped us from, from reaching out to the folks in the basketball universe to, to stay in touch and to keep uh, our fingers on the pulse of what's happening. And everybody shut down. Like literally everybody. So I, I, I don't think that this is a situation where people are kind of coloring outside the lines. I, I've, I've been shocked to see how everything has slowed to a halt. And uh, that allows us to catch up with some people we might not normally be in touch with here on the podcast. And, and that's why this is a special edition of the Hang Time Podcast, because we're catching up with a Hall of Famer, one of the all-time greats. Uh, I, I swear she's on the Mount Rushmore of women's hoops. Cheryl Swoops, um, champion, all-star, MVP, you name it. She did it all during her playing career. Um, and now she's a, a board member for the National Basketball Retired Players Association at the forefront of trying to help her peers get through this time. And she found a few moments in her busy schedule which has been slow like everyone else's to join us here on the Hang Time Podcast. And I think you, you want to give it a listen because it's, uh, it's an interesting perspective on what's going on. Joined by a uh, Hall of Famer, an all-time great, put her face on the Mount Rushmore of women's basketball, <laughs> Cheryl Swoops, first time here on the Hang Time Podcast. Cheryl, I appreciate you taking some time. I know we're in a, in a strange space, everybody, um, not just in the basketball world, but just in the world in general. What's, what's this like for you, uh, you know, being a coach, being a former player and watching the game that's been the lifeblood for so many of us come to a grinding halt like this? Man, you just put a lot on me. What a welcome, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't – every every day when I wake up, and, and this is the – God honest truth. Every day when I wake up now, um, not that I didn't do it before, but more so now, I'm just, I'm very grateful um, just to be able to wake up and, um, you know, and, and see another day. But I will tell you, it's so, it's just so different. Like life is just different. And, it, and it's not just because we don't have sports right now. Um, it's just with everything that's going on, I don't think any of us, anyone, anywhere ever thought in our lifetime that we would be going through something we're going through right now. And then you take away, you take away sports, right? You take away that entertainment, which is a form of entertainment for a lot of people to get away from the hustle and bustle of, of living. Um, yeah. and, and just to wake up every day and not know what the day is going to bring and what tomorrow is going to bring. And, you know, just, just not knowing what to do. Yeah. I, I probably feel like every single other person in this world that says, like, when, when will this end? When will this be over? And I'll tell you this, and then I'll let you ask the next question. Sure. That the, the, the thing that probably I, I try not to, to live my life in fear. Um, you know, because the fear is not of God. Um, but the thing that is scary or uncertain to me is not knowing what normal life will look like after this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's to me, that's one of the strangest things people keep saying, well, when we get back to this or when we get back to whatever, and I'm like, I don't know. I, I, you no, remember no, this no. probably as well as anybody. Yeah. I remember what life was like flying before 9-11. Yes. And then I remember how drastically different it was afterwards. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, and we just flipped and and changed, and everybody moved on like it was no big deal. It was just the new normal. Yeah, you you just you adjusted to it, and you know, and and I I, I feel I don't know how I feel on on most days, but you know, my my son just graduated from college and. Um, you know, signed with an agency the other day, and he's so excited about his future. But the other day, he said to me, he said, but mom, he said, like, when am I going to be able to to move on and and play at the next level? And I just said to him, honestly, I said, son, I said, nobody knows that. You know, I I said, we we can talk about it. The government can talk about it. Everyone can talk about it. I said, but none of us, none of us know if or when this will be over. We just don't. It's so I mean, it's so weird. Um, and and let me stop before I go on. Obviously, you're on the board, a uh, director mm-hmm. for the National Basketball Retired Players Association. Um, mm-hmm. And I know you guys have so many uh, services and initiatives that are a part of the program for the retired players and and what they're dealing with now. What is what's been the response and the reaction of the retired players who have reached out to you guys to ask, what do we do now? How does this, you know, how do we go forward? Well, and and I'm glad you brought that up because lots of times I think when, when people think of, you know, the retired players association and even think of, of us going as a, as a world going through what we're going through people's first thought is, well, financially, like, like, what are we going to do financially? And rightfully so. I, I think we, we all feel that. But what, what I'm proud of in, in being on the NBRPA board is, is not just the services that, 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 that we have and that they have to offer financially, but everything else from, you know, mental health and, just the services that that we've been able to, you know, and Scott Rochelle is doing a phenomenal job in, you know, reaching out to former players and talking to former players and saying, whatever it is you guys need, we're here, call us, you know, because mental health is is real. And yeah. even before this pandemic, you know, players were dealing with things and struggling with things and going through things and just not knowing who to talk to, where to turn to. Well, through the NBRPA, there are those services are there, and I I think it's important that players know that because a lot of them may not be aware of that. You know, I I read my Bible every day, I pray every day, um, and I feel like I'm in a good space when it comes to my mental health. Mm-hmm. But even you know, th- there are times when I'm just like God, like. Like, I just need to talk to somebody and, you know, somebody to help me understand what I'm feeling in this moment. And and I do feel like that's one of the most important things um, that we need to be aware of right now is people's mental health and the things that they're dealing with and struggling with right now, besides the financial aspect of, of what's going on. Yeah. You, you mentioned something so important when you talked about your son. Um and how this affects young people, you know, mm. people, people graduating high school or college, or, you know, and you remember the anxiety you feel at that age, wondering of what course. your life holds. And I can, I'm, I'm, I'm mortified for these high school seniors who have lost out on mm-hmm. prom, graduation and all these mm-hmm. milestones that, that everybody normally gets to experience. What, what do you, what's your, what's that conversation like? How do you talk to the student athletes you you know you you had responsible for or the young people that are looking to you for some wisdom you know what's crazy is that most most of the time seriously i feel like i i have an answer right mm-hmm. even if it ain't the right answer i have an answer <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean um i don't know like my son, for example, he's 22 years old, um, you know, and, and he's excited about the possibility of playing in the NBA or just going overseas playing, playing in the G League. And for that, for all of that to just be up in the air right now, right? Yeah. So he, you know, it's just like, mom, like, what, what do I do? So what I say to him, and this is maybe a little different because he is my child um, and I'm very real with him. Um, 
I, I tell him to continue to work out, right, you, as we all should, because that just, to me, it just is good for my, my mental. Mm-hmm. Um, so he does that. He he works out. He does stuff around the house, and he stays in shape because I, I still use the, the, same, the old saying, you know, you 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 got to stay ready when your numbers call. So you know, make sure you're ready. So he does that. Um, we spend a lot of time sitting down, having conversations about this could possibly become our new normal, and and what does that look like? Um, you know, we do a lot of Bible study together, and and I I honestly say to him. Um, <laughs> and I know this isn't a church service or anything, but my conversation with my son that I have with him is <sighs> everything that we're going through in this world is is going through right now is is in the Bible. Um, so we talk about that and we share that. And I just say to him, I said, you know, son, I I, I feel like God is trying to get our attention, and I feel like God is tired of us just just being mean and evil and treating people bad. And, and he's showing us none of you are in control. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what your status is. I don't care what color you, none of that matters. Um, And I just feel like that's him getting our attention. And once he has our attention and we show him, okay, we get it. I said, then, then I think he'll say, all right, they get it. and, and, And things will move on. I said, but I really honestly can't tell you what that going back to normal will look like. I don't think any of us know because I do think things will be different. Yeah. It's just, you know, and I I think about, you know, everybody's anticipating, well, how, how do you restart in, in this? And I wonder what that would be like for an athlete because you, you're on such a rigid schedule as an athlete for so long. And here's the, Maybe the the scary thought or the the crazy thing is, you know, and and I think LeBron said it and a lot of other athletes have said it. When I played, I played the game, one, because I loved it. I enjoyed it. I loved the competition of it. But I played for the fans. You know, I, I loved entertaining the fans. I loved hearing them scream. I loved hearing them boo me. You know, it didn't matter if I was playing, you know, in front of my fans or in front of the, the other team's fans. I, I love that aspect of the game. And the thought of that changing, that to me will completely change what sports looks like. And and then how does that affect the athlete? Because I, I do think that will affect I, – I honestly couldn't imagine playing in an arena, a stadium – with no fans. Yeah. And and the reason why I say that is because even when, when this does pass, because I do believe this too shall pass, you know, will it be a thing that we're where fans and people are like, I don't really want to be in in a venue where there are a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, there's so many unknowns and so many questions. Yeah. There it really are in the thing that burns me up as a as a guy who's covered sports for over two decades and been a part of this basketball ecosystem for the last 20 years. Yeah, is I, I mean, know, you've been around too. I know. I feel so old <laughs> too thinking about it. But I just know how much we all had invested in a season. I, I, you know, and for athletes, the people playing, I know it's even greater than it is for me, you know, and the, the time away from my family and the, and the schedule we keep, I'm, I'm thinking about the investment everybody made in the, in the 2019-20 season and the fact that there would even be a question as to whether or not you get to finish it or how you get to finish it <laughs> is like devastating. You know, just I know where I'm at mid-April. I know my wife knows I got to yeah. pack my bag yeah. and get everybody on the road until the end of June. And to have that interrupted or disrupted it's hard. It's, it's tough. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's tough. It's hard. It's frustrating. It's disappointing. It, I, you know, I, I don't even like. There are moments where I'm like, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. But if if I'm an athlete right now who 
is still playing, whether that's NBA and, and, you know, you look at the WNBA right now, they, they don't even know if, if they'll have a season, you know, I mean, training camp's been postponed, which means the season's going to be postponed. And, you know, and, 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 and that's people's livelihood. When I look at the NBA, for the most part, most of those players financially should be good. For for a while, even even without without finishing the season, right. but when I look at the WNBA, that's not the case with most of those players. You know, you you may have a handful that financially are 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 in a pretty good place and and could be okay with not having a season this summer, um, but most of them, that's not the case. So, but, but, but if I'm an athlete right now, whether that's WMA or NBA, as difficult as this moment, as difficult as this, and this unprecedented time is, I, I try to find something positive out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for me, what that would be, would, would be taking the time that that normally I wouldn't have, right? But taking that time that I do have now to fig to figure out what to figure out if this if and when this this is taken away from me, what what do I have? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because it could very well be taken away from all of us. And and I think it is a, a time and a moment for all of us to to reflect on on who we are as an individual and and what do we mean to 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 this world, if that makes sense. No, it does. I, I was I was joking with somebody the other day. We've had more sit down family meals in the last three weeks. Right. Than we right. have since my kids were in middle school. Like we didn't. And you know what? Sorry, didn't and that pisses me off. <laughs> no, seriously. But the same yeah. thing for me. Like yeah. that pisses me off because it should not take something like this to happen for us to have those moments. And I get it. What yeah. you do, what the athletes do, even what I do. I travel a lot. Yeah. But when I am at home, am I really at home? And I was watching um. Tyrese the other day on Instagram, mm-hmm. he said something and, and I, and I, it was simple, but it was true. He said, <laughs> we're, we're in our, our, with, before this happened, right? Mm-hmm. We're in the presence of our kids and our significant other, but we're not really present. Right. We're in their yeah. presence, yeah. but we're not present because so even true. though we're there, we're still thinking about, Oh my God, I'm sure you do. Like, Next week, I got to go make this trip. Exactly. And, and, you know, and so you start thinking you, you're still not with your loved ones. Yeah. And, and I, I think we're all guilty of that. So, you know what I've done with my son, my husband, because usually I'll cook. We'll, we'll sit down at the table, but we all have our phones. Right. And so when since this happened, I said, listen, we are going to sit down. We're going to have a family meal mm-hmm. and a family discussion without phones. Mm-hmm. That's the way it used to be back in the old days, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man. And it, and it felt so good. Like, it, it felt really good to be able to do that. Yeah. It's, it's, such, a, it's such a rearrangement. I was, I was on set with uh, Sam Mitchell and Jerry Greenberg the night that the season came to a halt. We, uh, we were walking in. We were in the back mm. talking, and we were getting ready to go out on the set, and they were like, hey, they just held up the Utah-Oklahoma City game. And we were like, what? But were, were you, in, were you, we you were, were on the, set? Yeah, okay, we were in at, studio. at, at mm-hmm. NBA TV getting ready to go on the wow. air. And we were like, what? You know, and Sam was looking at me like, seriously? And, you know, it, it was so strange. And wow. I think about the, the, again, the interruption. But think about the WNBA and all of the strides they've made here mm-hmm. the last few months. All of this getting ready to go into motion. Yep. <laughs> and you, you know, and I, and I wonder how you feel about that. I mean, you spent so much of your career defining what the WNBA would be for generations to come. And, and it, now, how do you, I mean, how does that make you feel now with the new CBA and all of the growth of the W? 
since you played in the league and you have to be proud of it, obviously. Um, of course. But I mean, but, you know, I, <laughs> I just had this be, conversation yeah. with someone else and said, you know, there was so much this, this season in a way reminded me of when the WNBA first started, mm. you know, all the hype and excitement going into it and building up to the, the first game. Um, and that's where I felt. And in a way, I kind of felt like the league had, had gotten away from just, just, just promoting it and building, building it up and get it, keeping people excited about it. Mm-hmm. And I felt like this season we were back there because of the new CBA, which was such a historical moment for not just the WNBA, but women, just women all over the world. And so going into the season, new CBA, so many changes, tons of talent. Like I felt like this summer was, was going to be that summer. Um, And now to sit here and think about the possibility of there not even being a season I, I, unfortunately, I think that could really hurt the WNBA. Yeah. And, and the reason why I say that is because there, there was a lot of excitement about it, right? you got new sponsors on board, picked up probably, I don't know, tons of new fans. Um, and now with everything that's going on, um, you know, businesses are going to take a financial hit and sponsors that the, that the WNBA had will probably take a hit. And, you you know, are you going to lose fans? I, I don't, I don't know. Um, and it, it crushes my heart to think that all of the women, um, not just the ones who are, are playing right now, but everyone that came before myself and the players who are playing now, the thought of them possibly not being able to enjoy this season and enjoy this moment and celebrate the history that they just made with this new CBA that crushes me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know, and I'll say, you know, we've kind of, it seems like we've kind of gotten on this really dark path, but I'm going to tell you one thing that has been a, a, a silver lining is I, myself, I've gone back and looked at archives of things I've written that, that other people have written, watched games <laughs> from years past. You, if you don't stop to, to take stock of yep. what's going on, you will miss just how fantastic a ride it's been I in agree. the game of basketball, period. Um, I agree. Men's, women's, the game. I totally women, agree with just, that. It's, a, um, it's been an unbelievable stretch since the mid-'90s to now to see the game grow the way it has. Yes. Well, you know, usually to, to, to be able to do things like that, right. We always say we're too busy. Yeah. You know, we're, we're too busy to take the time to, to really reflect on where, what we've been through, what we've gone through, where we are, where we've come from. And now you can't say that. You know what I mean? Like you can't say, well, I'm too busy to do that. Yeah, no, 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 no. I've been watching NBA TV and watching these old games and saying to myself, man, what? we act like everything we see now is the first time we've ever seen. I'm like, go back and watch, <laughs> go back and watch these games. Oh, like, man. It's, yeah. And it's been some good ones, right? Yeah, they've I been did the same, unbelievable I did the same players. Thing before. With, yeah, I did the same thing with some of the um, the college games. Right. It just, man, I, I don't know. I, I agree with you. It's like we we sit here and say, man, these are such dark times. And, and they are. They are. But at the same time, I think we should take the time to do exactly what you did. You know, like reflect on just just, just things that have happened prior to now. Um, you know, go back 20 years ago and, and right. see all the amazing things that, that happened, all the great talent that, that was out there. And, you know, and even for the younger players, NBA and WNBA, I'll say more so NBA because of the games that, that you know, you guys are showing. But these youngsters need to sit down and, and watch some of these <laughs> old games, you know, and, and really appreciate their history. Yeah. 
Agreed. That's what I told my son. I said, instead of being on that Xbox all day, go sit in front of the TV and watch some of these old games. Like, yeah. you can't even tell me who some of these players are. But yet you say you want to play in the NBA. You know? Yeah. It's, it it does make you take stock. It really does. It, it, it allows you uh, the time that we never have. Um, you know, in addition to the yard projects we've done and cleaning out closets and spring cleaning that I'm usually avoiding by being uh, you know, on the road. <laughs> now you can't. So, yeah, so like, I, I am ca- a captive, no question, to the household <laughs> business that has gone on for years. And I know that's got to be the same for anybody that's away from home for their work. And, and so I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. There, there's just a lot you miss when you're constantly in – the basketball is. environment that 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 you get a chance to listen to and see and experience now that I, I hope we don't lose sight of that when we do come out of this and, and I agree I, with you and I think we're coming out of this in some form or fashion our, whatever our new normal is I just hope that we all pause for a minute and say you know what yeah. let's not forget about when it was taken yes. away and how important it was yes I I totally agree with that and and I hope that's not the case I hope when, and I, I do agree with you, I, I do believe we will come out of this, um, but I, I truly hope that we all take the time to say, man, you know, and, and, and appreciate, even though it, it doesn't look good, but appreciate this time that we've had um, to slow down, just to slow down a bit. Yeah. Um. Well, look, I know it's I know it's getting to that time. It's probably almost dinner time at at, at your house. Since, yeah, since well, I got some meals. I got some good leftovers. <laughs> no, my husband threw some steaks and chicken on the grill last See? night. Now I just got to go throw baked potato in the oven and oh yeah, it is no, nothing like dinner time. You know, in a in a global pandemic, you get a chance to man to connect in ways you didn't before. Um, Cheryl wow. Swoops. I appreciate your time and, and your oh wisdom. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll see how we come out on this other side. Hopefully we'll see you somewhere in an arena, somewhere will. with people. Absolutely. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to uh, our conversation with Cheryl Swoops, who we can't thank enough for taking the time to join the show on the Hang Time Podcast. Um, we are going to continue grinding away and, and reaching out to folks in the basketball universe to come on and talk to us about whatever they got going on right now, whatever they're going through, whatever charitable efforts they have going on, how they're coping throughout this global pandemic. It's, uh, I think now is as important a time as ever to make sure we can continue to maintain those lines of communications here on the Hang Time Podcast. So we appreciate you. Um, we'll be coming to you as often as, as we can uh, to keep you engaged. and. For my producer, Anthony Bonaparte, and our entire Hang Time Podcast family, we'll see you right here next time on the Hang Time Podcast. This one is done, but in case you want another one, here's the link to all the fun from Seku Smith's Hang Time Run. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, NBA.com slash Hang Time, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Until next time, Hoops fans. <laughs>